Good morning, everybody. AM 1230 WJOB. I'm Jim Dilo, host of Jet in the Region. As you guys know, it is primary time, and that means a lot of political activity in the northwest Indiana region, and uh, we're proud to be right at the center of that stuff that's going on. And part of the way we do that is by the Community Programming Initiative, wherein we sell some time off to folks and we talk about their campaigns and about what they've been up to. This one actually is going to not only be filmed by us and is on our website at wjob1230.com, but the committee to elect Roy Dominguez is also filming this uh, for their uh, purposes. So those of you guys watching it on my normal camera, I'll actually probably be looking at both these cameras. All right. So a lot of stuff going on in here and a lot of stuff going on in the Dominguez campaign. Roy, how are you? Good morning, yeah, let's Good morning. turn you on. There. Uh, you know what? We are there being very Good consistent. Morning. When you were sheriff, I did that on a regular basis, did not turn your microphone on. So <laughs> everything's about, you know what? There's traffic on the Borman. The sunshine's coming out, and Roy Dominguez's uh, microphone didn't get turned on when he started the show. So I understand you need some ginkgo or something. Evidently, I, yes. I heard that this morning, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I sure do. Hey, let's get down to it. You are running for commissioner. In the second district, correct, and that is uh, anywhere west to east Lake County, but more on the southern end of the county. Pretty much like uh, Maryville and Cherville, and pretty much everything south of thirty. <coughs> excuse me, uh, but doesn't include Dyer. Dyer's still in the third district. Crown Point, Cedar Lake, St. John, Lowell, Winfield, and again Maryville and Cherville. And, and uh, well, let's talk trash i mean that's kind of the big thing that's going on i mean i know that you are uh uh doing a lot of other things in your campaign and uh you have uh made some initiatives that you'd like to put in when you come to be if you if indeed you do become the commissioner here in lake county but uh one of the things that you've been vocal about when you were sheriff and of course you're being vocal now about is the trash to ethanol plants, uh, this uh, supposed $30, $330 million plan to take all of our trash around here in Lake County, or most of it, and turn it into ethanol. And uh, just your comments on where that is now. I know there's a lot of turn of events in this thing. There is. And uh, there is. it's a project that started almost probably about six years ago uh, in terms of when they were promoting it doing the RFP, and what's surprising, uh, Jed, when they first started this whole project is that they didn't have a national search. They did more of a local search, and you had a uh, few vendors, but one of the vendors, and uh, at the last Solid Board uh, Waste Meeting, I think the uh, vice president of the Solid Waste Board said, wait a minute, we had a vendor who had financing for this whole project at the beginning, and now, uh, well, a lot of time has passed, and the current vendor has had it uh, for about three and a half years, or Powers, Powers uh, Incorporated, and uh, um, doesn't have uh, any financing. Three and a half years later, we don't have financing. They just now reacquired uh, the uh, purchase to, to buy the property down in Snyder. Um, they don't have any item. They haven't even applied to Indiana Department of Environmental Management for any permits to build this facility. And when they asked the uh, folks from Powers, uh, when the Solid Waste Board asked them, well, do you have a plant design of what this is going to look like? They didn't even have a plant design. And mind you, this project has gone from $70 million to $338 million. And they don't even have a plant design, no financing. No uh, IDEM permit, and it's just incredible. I guess you can write a book about it. What's what's really amazing is the people behind the scenes who are trying to promote this. Uh, uh, Mr. Shub has has been uh, probably the biggest proponent of this. I remember four years ago or five years ago when I was sheriff, he said that was his last time he was going to run, and that this was his number one project. And here we are again. Uh, this is his number one project again. And even the Times editorial board has said uh, to pull the plug on this, to dump this whole contract in the, in the trash. It's, it's, it's been enough. And they're promoting this as if it's going to happen. And it hasn't happened in six years. And we, the county taxpayers, are paying because we don't have a, a 
proposal to handle our solid waste, they'll say that we do, but we don't. This has been their, their top priority. I just wonder why it's been their top priority and the many people who are involved and and uh, why didn't they select the vendor who had the finance and able to, to build this. And this plant is unlike any other in the world. We really don't know if it's going to be uh, to work or if it's going to be built. They say it will, obviously. Uh, but what was also uh, unique than any other one is that we, the taxpayers, they were going to build this, and then we, the taxpayers, were going to be owners of this facility. Why were we going to be owners? And why is there no transparency? He says there's transparency. You can go right now and uh, log on to uh, uh, Lake County Commissioners. Uh, you can Google it. There's the contract's not on there. There's no information. Go to the Solid Waste Board meeting or Solid Waste Board, Lake County Solid Waste Board uh uh, or I think it's Lake County Solid Waste Management District. You go onto their website, there's nothing there. Why aren't the public aware of this? And why is because, like all the other contracts, there's been no transparency, the public is not aware, and when the public is not aware, then they don't know how their taxpayers' money is being spent on this whole project. A lot of money has been spent on this project, on uh, taxpayers' money, and we need to change that, and I'll change that. Uh, I asked the voters of uh, the second district to vote for me as their next commissioner. I'll make sure that we have a solid waste management program that benefits the taxpayers and that helps bring money into our economy, jobs to our economy. You'll hear Jerry Shub, uh, Mr. Shub says, well, this is going to bring union jobs and everything else. At the last solid waste board meeting, the chairman said, uh, well, wait a minute. It's been three and a half years. You've been promoting this that's going to bring jobs. We're all in favor of jobs. We're all in favor of good union jobs, good quality jobs. Uh, no one isn't. Everybody is. But the fact of the matter is this project that he's been promoting has not brought one union job. They've not turned one shovel. Mind you, we've, they've, they've made at least five or six announcements that they're going to have a turn shovel. They're ready to, to break ground, have never broke ground, don't even have permits to break ground. Not one union job, not construction job. Nothing. We're talking to Roy Dominguez, who's paid for by the committee to elect Roy uh, Dominguez. And, uh, Roy, I do have a couple follow-up uh, questions on that. And that is that uh, the Times says this. It says uh, that a trash ethanol problem is going nowhere despite years of discussion, yet Shub remains opposed to pulling the plug on the contract with Evansville developer Earl Powers. Now, you said something on the last show that uh, Earl Powers and Jerry Shube at one point met at uh, Jerry Shube's uh, Culver Farm, farm in uh, central Indiana near uh, Lake Max and Cucky. And uh, you questioned, you know, what, you know, what was said or what, what, was, what went down at that point. You said it again here. I just wonder why this has been their top priority. What do you think is going on? I mean, even the Times is questioning why Jerry Shub continues to stay loyal to the Earl Powers contract. Don't know. I mean, his campaign slogan is certainly promises made, promises kept. Uh, in the newspaper, uh, Jerry is, is Commissioner Shub uh, is quoted. I, I have all the respect for Commissioner Shub and, and his family and wish him and his family the very best. This is about... Uh, being the next commissioner. Uh, Jerry has uh, been there 16 years, or going on 16 years, and one is looking for a fifth term and says he's got unfinished projects. And, uh, well, I guess everyone's questioning, well, like, what's taking so long? Um, they met at his home in Culver, Culver, Indiana, which is in Marshall County. And um, Jerry told the newspaper reporter at the Times that they, uh, that they met over there, that Earl came over there and... Uh, they were looking at his garden. Well, Earl Powers is not going to come from Evansville all the way up to Culver, Indiana, to talk uh, to look at the garden. And then, lo and behold, uh, there's a contract there, uh, a multi-million dollar contract. Um, and uh, I guess he just really hasn't come clean with it all. Uh, I, you know, we, uh, you have on your campaign literature and have talked about it here on the air and when you were sheriff also, talked a lot about transparency. Um, I, I'm just wondering 
you know, really what we're getting at here in terms of of Earl Powers, who evidently, I remember when they signed the contract, it was kind of a big deal here. We announced it here right. on the air. Right. It was and a big deal. It was a very big deal because it looked like there was, I think there was 08, was that 08? And there were, uh, you know, a number of jobs coming to the region and uh, big, you know, going to take garbage from everywhere and turn it into ethanol. And it's, it hasn't happened. It hasn't And, happened. you know, I think you're hinting that there was some sort of promise made between Earl Powers and Shub, um, you know, and I, you know, I, we just kind of hinted about that, and I think you're, right. you're elaborating on that again. Right. Well, and not hinting, actually just stating what was said, what was made. Three and a half years later, here, Jed, all of us, let's say we wanted to build a home, and we, we contract with a construction company to build a home. And three and a half, late, uh, three and a half years later, they even broke ground. You'd move on. You'd move on. Uh, it's hurting the taxpayers. Uh, we're spending uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on this project. Taxpayers' money. Uh, Commissioner Shub and the board have been, uh, Commissioner Shub has been uh, promoting this continuously, continuously at the detriment of the citizens of Lake County in as much as that we're not looking for other viable options. And I, and I heard the scare. Uh, well, Dominguez wants to put a landfill in your backyard if you don't go with this project. Well, that's nonsense. Uh, you know, if you want to look at landfills, uh, talk to the town of Munster. They've done a great job with theirs. If you manage it well, uh, it's come a long way from where it used to be at in the 60s, like everything else. Uh, scientific development and, and research has made uh, landfills uh, a, a whole different entity and business. Uh, here, uh, just this last weekend, I believe, the town of Munster announced uh, with Congressman Visklowski and L Senator Luger's help and, uh, and others uh, how they've done a great job in, in converting that landfill into a, a very nice uh, park, what used to be somewhat of a blighted area before, uh, and now they're converting their, their methane gas into uh, money for the town and for the citizens that ha that promotes jobs that pr brings uh, money into the community helps reduce taxes so this whole scare that uh, well if you go with Dominguez he's going to want to promote a landfill I say let's look at other viable options and since they haven't done that for three and a half years still now mind you in November uh, just last November uh, when uh, Commissioner Shub was the chairman he gave them 90 days, or 90 days, I think it was, yeah, 90 days to come up with the financing. And he says, okay, we're really going to put their, uh, hold their feet to the fire. And in Feb by February, they better have the financing. Well, I asked Commissioner Shub if he would uh, step down and resign, and he didn't run for the chairmanship. And he says, well, that he couldn't run. Uh, fine, whatever it is, you know, it's just time for new leadership just like it is in the commissioner's office. It's time for new leadership, new energy. And so we now have a new chairman. So in February, well, during that month of November, uh, or months of November and February, they had, a, they had contracted with this guy named Hugo Sadina. Hugo was supposed to have been from Las Vegas and was going to help him get secure the financing for this whole project. There was a big discussion about that. Prior to that, if you might recall, they were going to sell insurance policies to help finance this so that if people uh, had life insurance policies and I don't remember how it's all supposed to work but when the people died the premiums would go to help fund this uh, this life uh, this uh, project well none of those worked February Hugo Sedina you couldn't find Hugo Sedina um, came up with they came up with nothing zero and uh, I believe it was uh, Jeff Langman, who uh, said that he had lost all confidence in Oral Powers. In fact, at that meeting, Oral Powers walked out of the meeting, uh, at the Solid Waste Board meeting. And here recently, I guess he sent a letter of apology. And some said it was just done recently, right at the time when he had walked out or thereafter. Uh, he said his wife had had some health issues. And, I, and if that is true, I hope that he and his wife or his wife's health is better. But... It's not nothing personal. It's just a matter of the citizens and the taxpayers. We are no longer the owners. I spoke out against that. So we're not going to be indebted for $338 million as the taxpayers. Uh, Jerry, Jerry has never, Commissioner Shub has never answered that. Uh, we're no further along. They have no money. 
So in February, they said, okay, you have 60 days in which to cure. We are noti notifying you, Earl Powers, notice of cancellation of this contract. And so you have 60 days and to come up with item permits, purchase of the property, uh, financing, and other things to, that they needed to accomplish. And so that was due April 2nd. Nothing. Well, Nothing. you know, we're going, uh, we're talking to Roy Dominguez, of course. He is a former sheriff here in Lake County for two terms. And now he's running for commissioner in the <coughs> primary in the second district <coughs> on, um, in the second district in the Democratic side. You know, uh, Roy, there's, uh, Obviously, you're not the, you know, you're the only one. I think you were kind of early on very critical of, or at least very, uh, did a lot of analyzing of this project. And uh, now I think, it, you know, it still hasn't moved along forward. But the there have been other things that you want to, you know, you've been right. putting forth in your, right. uh, in your campaign. But I just got to ask you this personally. I mean, it, it, uh, it has turned into a rather contentious campaign and a rather uh, it's kind of a big dog fight between you and Jerry Shube on the uh, southern end of the county. Um, how do you like the dog fight personally? Um, I think that's good for the citizens of Lake County. Uh, we should always have a, a, a vigorous election, uh, encourage the citizens to come out, let them know that there is a choice. I believe that uh, we need to move on. I think the Times editorial said uh, that we need a fresh look or fresh blood uh, into this whole office. Uh, when you look at the office, uh, oh, getting that to the last part. So in April 2nd, they came up with nothing, and Jerry was out, uh, Commissioner Shub. I say Jerry. I know Jerry on a personal basis, and as I said before, nothing personal. It has to do with the election and representing the best interests of the citizens. Um, he went around and, and convinced the others to give Powers an extension of 90 days. Now, 90 days on three and a half years. Why? Why? Why should the citizens of Lake County be held hostage to this whole project uh, simply because of Jerry's trying to get it beyond the election so they can say that it's, it's still going, it's going to bring all these jobs? Not one job. And a 90-day extension on a three-and-a-half-year project. Nothing has been built. We need to move on, and we haven't. And that's because Jerry uh, is still uh, uh, promoting this. And he says he's got all these commitments from these, uh, these local communities. You know, there has been no official action on what he calls these interlocal agreements to bring the trash to the facility. Not one official action has been taken on a vote by a town or city council on this project to bring, to enter into a local agreement with them. Not one. He says he has verbal commitments. Well, uh, verbal commitments in, in contract really doesn't uh, work. You've got to have a signed contract. You have to have a, a uh, and in government you have to have a vote on, on this project. He has none. Three and a half years later. Now, what they won't tell you, and I want to tell you here on the radio jet, um, they've mentioned that it'll cost $17.50 to dump the trash at this facility. What they haven't said, and what they were supposed to do and put out for contract, and they haven't done it yet, and it's my belief they haven't done it purposefully, is that they won't tell the citizens of Lake County, and I want to tell them here on WJOB, is that... That's not the only cost. What they won't tell you is the other hidden cost. The other hidden cost is this, Jed, and to your listen audience, is that that $17.50, that's only to take the trash to the facility. You're still going to, and they want you to believe that that's the, the total cost. That is not. That is only one cost. You're still going to have to pay, we the citizens, all of us, if this, this were to go through, we're still going to have to pay to pick up our trash from curbside to a transfer station and from a transfer station to the facility. They were supposed to put out what is called an RFP, a request for proposal, to see how much it would cost to do that over a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. 
They were supposed to do it. I was the sheriff at the time when I saw all this going. I didn't intend to run for commissioner, but I saw all the, uh, quite frankly, all the shenanigans that were going on. And uh, it's like, why? Why aren't we transparent? Why aren't we truthful with our citizens, letting them know exactly what's going on? Again, log on to, to the Lake County Commissioners. Google them. You'll find no information. You go to the Solid Waste Board, uh, Management District Board, to their website. Nothing about this. It was one of the most, if not the most important project that they have. Nothing. But this is indicative of other things. I've talked about transparency. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut in here a little because I know uh, some of you guys from your campaign. I mean, you, you've got, quite frankly, this isn't altogether different than when you were the yeah. sheriff and you were talking about this topic and, and you know, I tried to move it along and you wanted no. to come back to it because you were very yeah. critical of this right. from the beginning and, and you do know the uh, ins and outs of it. But I, ha right. I have to tell you that I know your uh, campaign guys are going to want me to make sure that you get in a few other things. Okay. Is that okay if we move along yep. a little bit? Yep. Uh, the t uh, yep. You know, it, 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 this is not anything new. <laughs> Roy has been very passionate about this uh, topic about trash to ethanol. Of course, Roy Dominguez is paying for this Times Committee to elect. Uh, here's what the Times says in an endorsement okay. of you. And right. they endorse you over Jerry Shub, who's been there, what, 16 years, is it? Is it? Correct. Yeah, at the end years. of this year. Yeah, at the 16. end of the year. It's been 16 years. Uh, Brian put this on my desk here. I uh, was gone over the weekend. As you, as you may know, I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, I and, heard about that. Yeah, and I, um, he gets here and he says, well, make sure you know you look at this. And I, quite frankly, was a little bit surprised. The Times will, typi will typically... Uh, go with incumbents, although you have had a, a pretty good relationship with the Times over the years. So here we go. We would like to see fresh blood in that office, which rules out Shub. Dominguez, well, not exactly new to Lake County government, would, it, would be new to that office, would at least be new to that office. Dominguez makes a lot of promises about transparency and eliminating no-bid contracts, and he would have to be held to, to those promises. Talk about no-bid contracts. No-bid contracts. That's where... Uh, Commissioner Shub has been giving contracts to other people, to contractors, without putting it out for competitive bid. That is not a benefit to our citizens. Uh, what we would need to do and what I would do is that I would put those contracts online. So whoever would like to do business with their county government will have an equal opportunity to be able to do that. You don't even have an opportunity if you're not aware of it. And they won't publicize it. Uh, they say they announce it. Put it online. It's very easy to do. It doesn't cost anything. They've got a, a uh, computer uh, data system uh, and company that can do that very easily. Uh, they can handle that. Uh, and so these no-bid contracts. Take, for instance, in the cafeteria. Uh, Jerry's friend uh, gets this no-bid contract to run the cafeteria for $300 a month. Uh, and mind you, it's, it's not even a written one. Uh, J uh, Commissioner Shub told the newspaper they've uh, either he or through his lawyer had indicated that they've done it uh, via a handshake for the last, I think the last contract was in 2005. And so uh, he gets to run the cafeteria. Here's what he gets. For $300 a month, he gets all of his uh, NIPSCO bill paid, his water with the city, uh, the insurance for the facility, any equipment that he has to replace or that is broken, whether it's refrigerator, stove, furniture, is paid for by, is replaced by courtesy of the taxpayers. All, mind you, still for $300. He also gets a contract for $60,000 to serve uh, food uh, to the jurors. Uh, we don't know how much is served or what's he charging. Um, it's not online. Nobody can find it. He also gets a job in the evening as a night watchman or building security, uh, and I don't know exactly how much he's paid, probably somewhere in the tune of about $30,000, plus insurance, plus benefits, and what does he pay? $300 a month. That includes everything. Um, uh, and so all those things, all those transparency, all those no-bid contracts, they should go up for competitive bid. Uh, they should be put on the uh, Internet so that people can, can do that. Recently, uh, there was also a contract that was let out uh, that uh, where, well, res was over a period of years in which a company was awarded somewhere in between about $30 million to provide some renovations to the different county facilities, including the one in Crown Point. $30 million, that's when they said we need more taxes. 
uh, we don't have enough and we're, we're moaning, but he says, but no new taxes. Well, I say reduce taxes uh, in addition to no new taxes. $30 million, that, it was a no-bid contract. The company's from Farmingham, Massachusetts. I believe it's an architect and an engineering firm. I'm sure they're a fine firm. But we've got uh, good architects and good engineers here, right here in Lake County, who are paying their dollars, are employing our citizens. I would say where the law permits, Lake County citizens first, and also to put it on competitive bid and to put it online so that everybody can have an opportunity to do business with the government. Tell the gas commission. The commissioner's meetings uh, have never been telegasts, as far as I understand. Correct. That was another one. Thank you, Jeff. And then yeah. you want to put it so that anyone can watch the meetings. I will streamline it so that you can watch the meeting from the comfort of your office, your home, wherever you're at, and that you can see the commissioner's meeting. We need transparency. People have a right to know what their government is doing. We'll, we'll, we'll streamline it, as they said, put it on the uh, web, and you can view it right on your PC. You can view it on your iPad. You can view it at home. You can streamline. You can log in. And the meetings, uh, the minutes, if you log on to right now, log on to the commissioner's uh, website, the last meetings that they have on there is April of 2010. April of 2010. This is why we need, I believe, what the Times called for fresh blood, for new energy, but we need economic development. We can do that when we have a transparent government, we have people participating in their government, and that they're welcome to do that. And that's what I would do, and that's why we need a change over there. That's why I asked the voters to vote for me. We've been working very hard. We've been working and knocking door to door. Many people would ask me, who's our commissioner? When I tell them that the person has been there for almost 16 years, they're just astonished. And they say, well, Roy, what does the commissioner do? I'll change all that. I, I'll make sure that people understand what their, their government does, what their office does, the commissioners, and that they have a, an opportunity to do business with the government. We streamline it. They can see it. They'll know it. And how about this, Jed? How about you're, you're, you're a member of the media. Uh, how about if you were to log on and say, you know, I just want to know who our, who who is it that our tax our tax money employs? Who are our county employees? Can I log on and find that out? How about that? You cannot log on and find that. If you go to the commissioner's website, it says no documents found. All right, here's what the Times says in their endorsement of you. Dominguez correctly notes the lack of transparency in the commissioner's office. Look on the county's website for minutes from previous meetings, and you'll be disappointed. That must change, as Dominguez has promised it will. The Times has said some very good things about you here, right. and they have given you their endorsements. How do you feel about the Times endorsing you? Well, I want to, uh, uh, I'm honored. It's, it's not myself. It's the entire committee, the citizens who have been backing our campaign. Uh, it's been a very positive campaign. It's about talking about the issues. Again, as I said, and I say continuously, I, on a personal basis, I like Jerry and wish him and his family well. It has nothing to do personal. It all has to do with the issues, the issues affecting the citizens of Lake County, how we can do better, how we can make uh, Lake County a, a better place, bring jobs for our citizens. And as far as the times, uh, uh, I'm honored that they would do that. Uh, I'm always very mindful not to be... Uh, uh, I could just say make sure that I don't cross that journalistic line of what they need to do and 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 uh, make sure that they're, uh, even though I, I've always enjoyed a good relationship with the media. And the reason I do, just like I come here, Jed, for the time that you folks have taken over WJOB and you've done a great job, you've been an asset to our community, you inform the citizens, just like you are in this primary election, you're at the center of it all, uh, I'm always here. I'll continue to do that if the citizens were to elect me as their next commissioner. But what I do with the media, if they call me, I always answer their phone calls. I always respond to the phone calls. I let them know what I'm doing, uh, the good with the bad, the tough with the easy, um, and to let the citizens know what's going on. And that's what I'll continue to do. And they like that. And so I want, I'm honored on behalf of me and my committee and I ask the citizens of Lake County to vote for me on May 8th as their next commissioner of the 2nd District. He is Roy Dominguez. He's paid for this past half hour. Thanks a lot, Roy. I appreciate yep. it.